Floodgate is a level which divides opinion among a lot of Halo fans. Some hate it, some don't mind it, and some, like me, really enjoy it. Other than 343 Guilty Spark, which is in a league of its own due to it being the Flood's very first appearance and blooming amazing to boot, I think it is the best Flood-centric mission in the entire series. Before we talk about why exactly, here's the Halo 3 story so far. Arriving back on Earth following the events of Halo 2, Master Chief, Sergeant Johnson and the Arbiter battle Covenant while trekking through the Tanzanian jungle before being ferried to a base named the Crow's Nest. There, Fleet Admiral Hood and Miranda Keys outline their plan to prevent the Covenant from digging up and activating a Forerunner artifact in New Mombasa, but they're interrupted as the base is attacked. Chief journeys along the Salvo Highway to the city of Voy, where he manages to destroy a Scarab as well as anti-aircraft guns guarding the excavation site. The UNSC launches a counter-attack, but the Prophet of Truth and his fleet narrowly escape using a newly created slipspace portal mere moments before a far deadlier foe arrives on the scene. Floodgate kicks off with Miranda Keys outlining her plan to stop the Flood. The Flood. It's spreading all over the city. How do we contain it? Find the crashed Flood ship. Overload its engine core. We either destroy this city or risk losing the entire planet. Do it. Chief, make your way to the crash site. This video's title makes a very bold claim, so let's get cracking by chatting about one of my reasons why. Until the advent of Halo 3, I don't think Bungie had the graphical horsepower available to them to really do the Flood's presence justice. Halo Combat Evolved has multiple mirror levels towards its end, which many enjoy due to their depiction of the rapidly escalating Flood threat. There's the outdoor exploration and close quarters combat in a Covenant ship during Truth and Reconciliation, which then occurs again during Keys, except there's Flood. There are the wide open spaces and forerunner architecture of Assault on the Control Room, which you then later work your way through backwards over the course of two betrayals, except there's Flood. There are the hallways of the UNSC's Pillar of Autumn, which you later revisit as part of the Moor, except you get the idea. That's all well and good, however, I don't think the environment changes enough following the Flood's reveal for the backtracking not to be quite noticeable, and Combat Evolved's second half does take a hit because of that. Halo 2 is far more varied when it comes to the Flood, although I'd argue also not much more inspiring, but you do at least get to better witness their impact firsthand, as you first move through the Covenant's holy city during Gravemind while a civil war erupts around you, before you do the same again during High Charity by which point the place has become a flood-infested hellhole. Up until Halo 3, High Charity was by far Bungie's best attempt at depicting the devastation the flood almost immediately caused, but none of it ever felt as detailed or as dynamic as I'd have liked. Floodgate is different gravy altogether. The slipspace portal looms large above you, and the city of Voy burns ahead of you as you watch marines desperately battle for their lives while Flood bound across rooftops and then jump from them, surprising and then rapidly taking care of another group of marines. You even get to see one of them being turned directly in front of you, if you decide not to intervene of course. The violence and devastation caused by the Flood's arrival is on constant display, both through scripted events and the backdrops your struggle is set against, and it is is, in my view, the best work Bungie has done when it comes to showcasing their horrific effect. No other level depicts such a transition as confidently as Floodgate does, and I also think the shock of witnessing such desolation is felt far more acutely due to it happening on Earth. Reaching the mission's midway mark, you're privy to one of the slow-motion Cortana scenes which are universally disliked, and with good reason, followed by a meeting with a ranting Marine. The LT, the sergeant, they were all infected. I could see it crawling, sliding around beneath their skin. Oh. These are something of a bungee staple, with 343 Guilty Spark being the first to include one. Stay back! Stay back! You're not turning me into one of those things! I'll blow your brains out! Get away from me! And Halo Reach also features another as well. Seriously, we're fighting aliens now? Innies were bad enough, now we've got freaking aliens? Not me, man. I'm out. Oh, out! 
I like the ambiguity surrounding this one in particular though, as it's not entirely clear whether his squad mates were actually flood or not, their bodies certainly don't show any signs of infection, and I can't help but wonder whether the front seat you're given to a marine being assimilated earlier is meant to allude to the idea of him slaying his friends without cause. After all, you've already seen how difficult it is to stop one person being turned, let alone three in quick succession, but hey, perhaps he's just a sharpshooter extraordinary. Ordinaire. Either way, there's no right answer, and it's wonderfully unsettling. Stepping outside, some friends arrive to provide you with some much needed backup. Hail humans and take heed. This is the carrier, Shadow of Intent. Clear this sector while we deal with the flood. I'm also fairly confident one of them pushed me off the edge of the map during one of my playthroughs too, however, so friends might be an overly strong description. Along with its environments being horrendously gorgeous, the second big reason I'm such an admirer of Floodgate is its pacing and level and encounter design, which together make it a much less tedious experience than most other Flood-centric levels. It won't take you longer than roughly 10 minutes or so to get through, and while in the past I have myself said Floodgate could be lengthier, on balance I think it being short is a good thing, as it avoids the issue of Halo's infamous space zombies outstaying their welcome, like they do in Halo Combat Evolves Library or later Halo 3 Mission Cortana, for example. It's a relatively speedy, sustained burst of combat which maintains a fast pace, and you're always moving forwards rather than being stuck in any one area for an extended period of time, while Flood appear in front of you, behind you, and from pretty much everywhere. Arenas have then been designed to accommodate that pace. Whether you're indoors or outdoors, the spaces within which encounters occur are usually fairly narrow, which means little little time is spent having to figure out where your enemy is, as 99% of the time they'll be directly ahead of you. That is crucial. Flood heavy levels have often been likened to corridor shooters like Doom or similar, but I've always found the abundance of flood spawning in from ridiculous places all around you to be counter to that. Here however, you're mostly clashing with your enemy head on, and on the whole, it makes the flood's presence less overwhelming and less irritating than it otherwise would be and has been during previous entries. The introduction of pure forms also speaks to this. You meet one separated from the rest of his mates to allow you to get a handle on this new type of threat, and you then again push on forward with the majority of them ahead of you. You're not bogged down by a gaggle of them appearing from every which way, and that makes your first skirmishes with them pretty tolerable compared to the mess which is many of Cortana's encounters just a few levels later. I do believe, however, that it is important to remain at least somewhat objective. An argument could definitely be made that Floodgate is filler, stuffed into a campaign which has already had much of its fat trimmed and which arguably could have done with two or three missions being added to it. Those claims would be perfectly legitimate too. It reuses environments, it's quite brief, and it seems to me to be more of a transitionary segment between the first and second halves of the campaign, rather than it being a must-have mission which under no circumstances could be cut. I don't necessarily agree with that sentiment, but as part of a game that acts as the end of an epic trilogy and which only really gets going nearly halfway through, it wouldn't be incorrect to say that Halo 3's first half lacks brevity. Floodgate itself could have been the second half of the storm instead of its own level, which I'll begrudgingly admit probably would make a lot more sense given just how short it is. Finally, a quick word on the soundtrack. It's very reserved and I kind of like that. A lot of the time there's no music whatsoever and when there is it's mostly percussion heavy pieces which keep to a low volume and allow the action on screen to shine. I'd never normally say that keeping Halo 3's soundtrack on the back burner is a plus point considering how fantastic it is, but letting the horror of the Flood's relentless onslaught and the brutality of combat take centre stage I think was the correct decision. Reaching the down ship at Floodgate's conclusion, Master Chief meets a former adversary. On Halo, you tried to kill Cortana. You tried to kill me. Protocol dictated my response. She had the activation index, and you were going to destroy my installation. You did destroy my installation. Now I have only one function, to help you reclaim her, as I always should have done. And while half a continent is glass to prevent the flood spread, the UNSC and elites converge to decide what to do next. If your construct is wrong, 
when the flood is already won. I'll find Cortana's solution. And I'll bring it back. Earth is all we have left. You trust Cortana that much? Sir. Yes, sir. So this is either the best decision you've ever made or the worst. Floodgate is one of those Halo affairs just as many will skip as look forward to, and that's not wholly surprising what with it being a level centred on the Flood. They've always been Halo's more controversial outings. If you are someone who maintains a thorough dislike of Floodgate, you'll point to the reuse of environments being a clear attempt by Bungie to wring maximum value from the assets they created, while its short length, combined with the fact that Halo 3 only has 9 levels total, gives it the feel of being filler. That being said, I adore it, thanks to its quick pace, gorgeous vistas, and its tendency to keep the Flood ahead of you at all times, which makes a huge difference to my enjoyment when facing off against them. There are a lot of Flood levels I'm not particularly fond of, but Floodgate ain't one of them. It's a joy to quickly blast through, and it is, for me, the best of the Flood outside of their maiden outing. Thanks for watching the video, boys, girls and Spartans. If you had a floody good time, do consider liking, subscribing and sharing your thoughts, and hopefully we'll catch up again soon.